building thermal envelope, uh, looking at the building in a way that we see what, where the continuous thermal boundary is, um, understanding that the air sealing and insulation layers need to be continuous around the entire thermal boundary of the building. And as we're looking at that, you can see on this diagram here that the, the thermal boundary in red is continuous all the way around this simply shaped building. You can see how a simply shaped building, it's fairly easy to do. Still takes a lot of attention to detail and careful planning, but um, it's much easier than on a complex building. So the, you should be able to, uh, anytime you should be able to put your finger on the plan and trace where the air barrier is and go all the way around the building without taking your finger off, you know, without, without any breaks in it. So this is a really key concept in terms of energy efficient design and construction is the, the continuous thermal boundary. Um, and it's easy enough to, do, to draw a red line on a plan, but when you're out on a building site and you've got you know, different angles and different things going on, you've got to really get into your mind, okay, where is my air barrier? Um, in the, under the slab, it might, you might have a, um, a, a vapor barrier under the slab that ties into the concrete wall, and then the concrete wall ties into the rim joist. So how are you connecting those different pieces of the air barrier so that it makes a continuous air barrier around the whole envelope. And that's, um, that's what we'd like you to start thinking about, because um, that's the way to get really good air, air sealing on a building, is to, is to have that continuous air barrier. And then the insulation layer, which is also continuous, has to be in contact with the air barrier. It can be inside, it can be outside, but it has to be in contact with the air barrier. Otherwise you get air moving between the two, and it basically makes the insulation, it can make the insulation completely useless if you get cold air moving between the air barrier and the insulation. You actually can get convective air loops moving within an assembly. You get cold air go dropping and warm air rising in within a building assembly and you end up losing a lot of heat that way. There's actually, there, there is a detail in the new code that says that the, the insulation needs to be in contact with the air barrier at all times. Um, Looking at the windows and how they play into the air barrier as well, um, you know, the windows are part of that and looking at that detail between, you know, wall cavity insulation, how that transitions to the window itself and then from the window back to the wall um, is, it, 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 there's a lot more detail that goes into it than you might imagine. And windows, of course, are absolutely key because they are both insulation and air barrier and they're also usually the weak link in a, in a building assembly. If you think, you know, the new code is, uh, wall, our insulation is R21, windows, uh, code window is R3, right? Um, so, in, in, in pretty much every case, uh, the windows are the, are the worst, part, windows and doors are the worst part of the insulation layer and are often the worst part of the air barrier as well. And so, putting money into good windows is really, really important. Um, you can get windows now that, that get down to, that get up to R10 or 11. Um, they're, they're expensive, but um, we'd like to see, what well, we do like to see, uh, you know, simpler, smaller buildings with much better windows and much better detailing. Um, because uh, otherwise, when we do energy audits, we see this all the time. And you'll, you'll get to see a lot of infrared images that we've taken during energy audits to show where, where air is leaking in buildings. And um, so we get to see it over and over again. And, and it's amazing how, how often we see the same things happening. And, you'll get, and we'll, we'll go over a lot of the most common um, things that, that go wrong as far as air sealing buildings. One of the things that uh, we've spent the time to do is to put together a window comparison spreadsheet. Um, we've, you know, a lot of times people would come in and ask us, you know, what are the best windows or what's the best bank for my buck? So we, we spent the time and we went through um, the, we put a spreadsheet together, here it is, where we got a, we contacted as many window manufacturers that we knew that had a window that was a .30 or better and we put it on this spreadsheet. We put the performance information, the U value of the window, Manufacturers here, we did aluminum clad, wood, we did some fiberglass, 
vinyl. further down there's some vinyls. Yeah. Um, put the, the U value, the R value, which is just the in inverse of the U value, the solar heat gain coefficient, and the visible light transmission. We're still <laughs> needing to get the air infiltration numbers. That's a new requirement for the NFRC that, that will be coming on pretty soon. Um, we also got a cost of, of that window. We contacted manufacturers or dealers and got the cost of that specific window. We had a, a 2040 casement. We just got, we just were like, all right, we're going to get the cost of one window so we can compare all these different windows to one another. And, and then we put, broke it down into cost per square foot and cost per square foot <laughs> per R value. Because we, we don't feel like the cost per square foot really tells the whole picture. If you got a window that has really good performance, but it's a little bit more than one that's really poor performance, the cost per square foot for, per R is going to really show that. So like an example is this Dorwin window, which is a accurate fiberglass, door. accurate Dorwin, yeah. um, 0.17 on the U value, cost per square foot per R is $8. Um, whereas we look at a, like a, an eagle, the cost of the window is 320, whereas this accurate Dorwin is 396, but the cost per square foot per R is, is, a lot, is a lot less for the accurate Dorwin. So this is available on our website. We would ask you, and, and I put this on the website too, but if you use this, please help us keep it up to date. If you know of another window manufacturer that is, uh, that's not on here, or if you call the company and you find that our price that we've got on here is way off because we don't have time to call the companies every few months to update all of this and so we'd really like your help. This is a, I, we think is a really valuable resource for all of us to be able to compare different window manufacturers performance and costs and stuff but uh, we really would like help to keep it updated so um, feel free to use it. It's on our website under resources and, um, and please Give us feedback, help us keep it up to date.